This is the first time that we've done open enrollment in a couple of months. Yeah. It's been a while for anybody that's not familiar with open enrollment, open enrollment. We traditionally do this um, the last Wednesday of the month. And um, this wasn't the last Wednesday of the month, but we just kind of rescheduled it a little bit. But it's a window into EYL University. Um, that was kind of the whole uh, premise of it was to kind of give people an idea of what we have going on here at EYL University. Um, but, you know, obviously we've been traveling, we've been moving around, we've been doing a lot of stuff. So we haven't actually been able to to do one of these on YouTube in, in a long period of time. But felt that, you know, now was a good time to, to bring it back. Um, and also it's perfect timing with the relaunch of EYL University, which we'll be talking about in detail. Uh, but first, one wanted to kind of just let you guys know what will be going on today during this session. So we're going to be talking about credit. We're going to be talking about uh, business branding, and we're going to be talking about real estate. We have <clears throat> some esteemed guests. We have Dan Fleischman. We have Herman Dulce. Uh, we have Matthew Garland. And um, we're going to be answering questions towards the end. We're going to, you know, have Q&A. So <clears throat> very educational, timely, um, you know, webinar, I think, because these are all extremely important topics right now, but especially heading into 2023. And this is where we're at right now. So, you know, it's important for you guys to start planning um, your next year because it's here pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, it, there's no time better than right now. I mean, it's the fourth quarter now, but the, the first quarter is how you want to set your year off. And uh, when you got people talking about how to build business credit, talking about how to build your brand from a marketing standpoint, talking about real estate, I mean, these are these are things that can change your life, right? Like these aren't just things that can change your day, this can change your life, can change your family's life. And anytime you're going to have people of like this level of this caliber of expertise, man, you got to take advantage of it. So shout out to everybody that's in here. I see the earners are piling in. Shout out to everybody on the tube. This is going to be one of them sessions, and I'm glad. I'm glad we'll be back doing it. You know, I, I kind of miss it a little bit. I feel like the, these these open enrollments were just jam packed with information, with people from the highest level, um, you know, in their in their fields. And uh, tonight is no no exception. We we got we got a jam packed show. We might have a few surprises. We may. We'll see. You never know. You never know. You never know who we know. That's a fact. So, all right. So let's get into this. Um, but first, before we start, I'll give you a rundown of EYOU. Um, of course, if you're familiar with us, you know that we do, you know, the classes every week. We do the financial planning calls with myself. We do the book club headed by Troy. We do the um, the MG, the mortgage guys, home buyers, blueprint, volume one, volume two, real estate calls. But we're revamping it. And we'll talk about, you know, that a little later. But, um, you know, we see the landscape changing. And we see our position in leadership rising. So, you know, we wanted to kind of add a higher level of service, a higher level of, um, you know, curriculum and make it more of a structured organization. So we've been actually working on this for six months and, um, you know, just announced a few things and we'll be announcing more things to come. But a lot of exciting stuff happening. We're going to be rolling out um <clears throat> live interactive courses, um, chapters across the United States and across the world, like real graduations, um, private community events. So we wanted to just double down. We already built the community, but we wanted to see how we can actually take it to the next level, next level education. That's what everything that we do is kind of like next level, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, okay, we had to assess what was going on and then see, okay, how can we 10X this situation and make it, you know, a hundred times more powerful. So we'll be announcing everything on Friday, but um, in the meantime, you can text the word learn L E A R N to four zero one two three eight seven four seven nine to be added to the wait list. And um, you will get, you know, all the updates and all the information once everything is announced. So I'm going to pin that in YouTube. And once again, that is <clears throat> text the word learn to 401-238-7479. And you will be added to the wait list and you will get all the updates and everything as you know, everything unrolls. Yeah. So 
I think that's one of the beautiful things, right? Like as we're doing this, we're realizing like we could be better. And what what better way to to do it than show people like, yo, we're gonna get better. Here's how we're gonna do it. Um, it, it's just one of those things that it's happening in real time. And just like everything we've done has happened in real time. And like we've always said, like anytime we do something, it's historic because it's never been done before. So we, we built a community, obviously UIL University. Uh, that started in, in 2019, in December 2019, with maybe like 70 people. And to see how fast it's grown, it's like, great, this is great. How can we be better? So we looked at the landscape and we said, all right, we like that piece over there. Oh, that piece is good. We can add that. Let's make this the, 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 the best educational experience, the most expansive educational experience that is out there. And so I'm so happy to to show the earners and show everybody what we got, man. It's going to be a, a historic day, historic weekend. Yeah, all around. probably so. <laughs> probably so. So, um, okay, let's bring Dan up if we can. Oh, let's bring him up. There you go. I see him right there. Perfect. He just raised his hand. <laughs> Made it even easier. Yes, yes. Very excited to have this conversation to start it off. Hey, what's going on? How's it going? Good, good. good. How, man, how are you? you? Just happy to be here. I'm really impressed with you guys. I've been watching you for years. So I'm happy to be here. Uh, I appreciate that. that thank man. you. Thank you. Thank you. So if anybody that is not familiar with Dan, I'll, I'll give his um his rundown. He is the youngest founder of a publicly traded company in history. Could probably just stop there. Yeah, keyword history. That's extremely <laughs> impressive. That means like ever. That's extremely <laughs> impressive feat. Um, after licensing his uh, his apparel uh, for nine point five million dollars at the age of nineteen, he went on to scale an energy drinks product into fifty five thousand retail stores. Um, over the years, he's launched one of the top five online poker sites globally. Has thrown forty nine elevator night events. Co founded hundred million mastermind experience spoken at over 250 business events angel invested in 43 companies and his agency has spent over 60 million dollars with social media influencers fashion brands film studios mobile apps and consumer products um as just a mastermind when it comes to business business branding and um the new age of business that we're in right now when it comes to you know social media influencers and um what we're on now youtube tiktok different things of that nature is extremely important and um dan has been a mastermind and somebody that a lot of our friends have built relationships with yep. and um they all speak extremely highly of him so first and foremost thank you for joining us appreciate it pleasure thanks for having me yeah did we miss anything um my charity for the homeless we've been doing it for 11 years we make backpacks for the homeless with 150 items inside that's very my real point very important especially at this time of year absolutely all yeah. right um so let's let, let's start this off um so I, I would like to talk to you about you know branding business branding is extremely important um but let's start off with something that you know i'm very passionate about when it comes to content creation um, and you know, I saw a post where you talked about, you know, the best things online are free. Like they say, the best things in life are free. The best things online is free. Like you can scale your business and, and grow it organically and you really don't have to have a budget. So this is an extremely important conversation. So can you talk about that? Yep. So the hard part for most people on social media is that they have these things in their mind of why they can't do it or why they don't want to do it or why it's scary. They're like, I'm not going to do TikTok because I got to dance around. I only do business videos. I don't dance around on TikTok and I get lots of views. You can too. They're like, oh, I don't want to tweet. I don't know if anybody's going to listen. People go viral with 400 followers and get millions of views off of Twitter because of the way the virality works on Twitter. People get like, I don't want to do Facebook because I don't want to see my aunt and uncle argue about politics. You don't have to use it as social media. You can just use it as media. You don't have to do the social part if you don't want to. If you don't like Facebook, don't do it. You don't like TikTok. You don't have to use it for the social element, but you do need to use it for media. Because you have a personal brand, whether you like it or not. Your friends from high school think about you. Your coworkers think about you. The people in your neighborhood think about you. People interact with you and they think about you and you have a personal brand. It's up to you to decide if you're going to tell your story or let them gossip and have rumors and think about you without you telling your story. And so for me, the reason I'm so passionate about social media is that I've watched it change so many people's lives. And I've watched people make money, make careers, make babies. Like A lot of things happen when you, when you create social media content. And it's free. 
Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube, every single one of those platforms is free. So there's no excuse about the budget part because it's free. You already have a fancy phone because you're watching right now on a laptop or an iPhone or an Android. So you already have a really fancy phone and a really fancy camera. So everything that you need to make social media is completely free. Yeah, can you, that's important. And can you talk about the, the importance of where you're placing the content? I know you said that, you know, I'd rather have uh, 2,000 uh, hits on LinkedIn rather than 20,000 views on Instagram. Having the importance of where you're placing the content and the value add of each one of those. Yep. So depending on your career, passion, or hobby, there's going to be different platforms for you. LinkedIn is very, very business focused, which is why it's the best platform. When you're trying to be a real estate agent, an investor, an accountant, you're looking for a job, you're trying to hire people, Link LinkedIn is the best platform for that. But it might, might not be the platform you make your content for. Most people make their content for Instagram or Facebook. What you can do is then repurpose that exact same content on LinkedIn, on TikTok, on Facebook, et cetera. So you're going to make your content for a platform that you're comfortable with, which is usually Instagram or Facebook, and then repurpose that exact same content on the other platforms. What you're not going to do is don't post about your dogs on LinkedIn. You're not going to post about kids on LinkedIn. That's more for Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and Twitter. LinkedIn is going to be very business career focused. But all the other platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, you can post the exact same content on all those platforms and then use your business content on LinkedIn. So um, I want to talk about, um, you know, building relationships. I know you worked with the Kardashians, right? Yep. So how did that go? What's the story behind that? So that started back in the Fashion Nova days when Fashion Nova was get, first getting started. I was driving to Kylie's house and driving to Kim's house and dropping off dresses and a cashier's check or wire transfer, whatever it was back then, um, to do posts. And then Fit T, I was doing their campaigns. They were spending six figures a month with me, sometimes millions of dollars a month with me. Same thing, I'd go over to Kylie's house, go over to Kim's house, drop off Fit T, explain what I wanted uh, for the posts. And from there, I was doing Black China, Scott Disick, Amber Rose, all the different characters on social media when it was first getting started. You know, they only had 500,000 followers, then a million, then 2 million, 10 million. They didn't have hundreds of millions of followers like now. And so watching the evolution of it has been fascinating to see the Fashion Novas, the Fit Tees, Pretty Little Thing, all these different brands that have scaled from social media. But it all really started back in the Fashion Nova Fit Tee days. Okay. So my, my follow-up question for that is, for people that's looking to work with influencers now, what advice would you give them to, you know, start working? Like if they have a clothing brand or if they are a trainer, what advice would you give people that's looking to work with influencers? Absolutely. It's never been easier to get connected with an influencer because you can just slide in their DMs. They have their email addresses most of the time in their bios. And you can also go to platforms where they're not as big. So let's say they're on Instagram and they got 3 million followers. They might not see your DMs, but on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, they might only have 4,000 followers or 50,000 followers, 100,000 followers, et cetera. So it's easier to connect with them, not on their main platform by DMing or emailing them on a different platform. Also, be really clear with what you want to offer. So if you're saying, I want to give you free clothes, or I want to pay you 200 bucks or 500 bucks or a thousand bucks or whatever you want to pay for the posts, make that clear in the first five words of your message so that they open up your message. This is really important. Don't say, hi, how are you doing? And then say, I want to pay you 500 bucks. Because what will happen is if I'm Amber Rose or I'm Tyga and I'm looking at your DM that came in, I'm going to see, hi, how are you doing? I've got thousands of those. So I'm not even going to open it if I'm the influencer. Does that make sense? So it's important in the very first few words to say paid posts, free clothes, start off with exactly what you want to offer in the first five words so that they can see it. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. That, that happens a lot. If I look at my DMs and somebody says, hey, Mr. Millens, I'm always looking because I feel like there's a student from my past that's reaching out to me. So that, that's very important. I want to talk about the consistency, right? As you're networking and you're, you're gaining, obviously, clients, you have to be consistent with what you're putting up. What's the strategic plan that you have or does it change based on clients' needs? Yep. So what's interesting for, for our agency, for example, we paid 3,500 influencers just this year. So 3,500 separate w 9 influencers. And if you understand influencers, that's like chasing cats, like to try to get them to fill out a W-9 form is not easy in the influencer space. That happened because of the consistencies for the last nine years, I have no long-term contracts. I do all the TV shows for BET for the last four years. I do everything for Oracle for the last five years. All my clients are four years, five years, six years, nine years, et cetera. 
from consistency, not from them being locked into contracts. I don't even have a long-term contract. The way I do it is everything I say, I under promise and I over deliver. And by doing that, even if it's just by a little bit, if I do that, the clients are going to reorder over and over and over. And that's what my whole life's been like, is that I always say, Hey, you know what? We're going to get you 1 million views. If we get them 1.9 million, what's going to happen? They're going to reorder, right? But what if I over exaggerate? I say, you know what? I'm going to get you 2.5 million views. And then I get them 1.9. I'm a failure, right? They're going to fire me. And so I always underestimate what I'm going to do for them. And don't ever say like, I'm going to get you 50 posts and then get them 45. They'll hate me. If I say I'm going to get you 30 posts and get them 45, I 50% over delivered. And so I'm not going to ever lose a client by saying something that's a realistic number and then overperforming. A lot of times people say, I'm going to get you a hundred different posts and I'm going to get you a hundred million views. Why would you, you don't have to do that. You don't have to exaggerate. And so I'm really big on under promising and over delivering. Yeah, that's extremely important. And I learned that, you know, I used to be in financial services and it's like, as an advisor, like you might tell somebody, you know, you can expect a 6% rate of return over the course of a couple of years. And then if they get a 12% rate of return, then they're looking at you like, you know, you're a hero. But if you told them that you're going to get an 18% rate of return, even if they get 15% rate of return, which actually right. beats the market, they're disappointed because right. the expectations that you set early on were too high. That's an extremely valuable lesson. You have to know how to set not even realistic expectations a little lower yep. than realistic yep. expectations. So you can over deliver. And now psychologically you look like a champion as opposed to somebody that didn't hit the benchmark. In all aspects of life. Imagine you tell your wife, I'm going to be home at nine o'clock and you get there at nine 25. You're in trouble, right? Yeah. If you say, I'm going to get there at 10 o'clock, get there at nine 25. You're a hero. I miss you so much, honey. I came home early. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I want to talk about um, <clears throat> branching out. Right. So it's like, you, you have multiple streams of income. And this is something that a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with as well, where they always hear that, that the saying you need seven streams of income. And I always say like, it's not necessarily that you need seven stream, seven different businesses or seven different jobs. You just need to perfect one thing really well. And then you'll have spinoffs off of that one thing. So like a restaurant, right? Like a restaurant owner can now, you know, write a cookbook, a restaurant owner can now, you know, be a private chef, they can coach, they can consult other restaurants. So you can create a whole ecosystem of, of revenue streams based off of one level of expertise. So how have you been able to, to kind of, you know, diversify your business model by doing multiple different things off of your core principle yep. of, of business? So, so my core business is Elevator Studios. That's my social media agency. I've done it for nine years. I'm going to do it for many, many years. I'm never going to sell it because you can't sell an agency. You only get a 1x multiple usually on agencies. So I'm never going to exit my agency. I use it for leverage to do exactly what you just said. I now have Elevator Rolling Fund, which is my hedge fund. I have Elevator Syndicate, which is 846 investors in my syndicate group. So I get 20% of fees when I invest into deals. We did $41 million in investments just this year. So I'm using my social media agency as my leverage point to pay influencers, to build the brand, get connections with brands, relationships, make influencers happy because I'm paying them for stuff. And then when I invest in the companies, I now have favors, right? Because I invest in this company. I say, hey, I made you hundred grand the last four months on social media. Will you post about this drink or this food or this skateboard or this brand or this bike or this restaurant, whatever. And they're happy to do it because I've helped make them money. And so I use my core business, exactly like you said. And then I branch out where I'm speaking at events, I throw Elevator Nights, which is my free event. I don't make money from that, but it's my free event that I bring in 300 to 1,000 guests at each event. But all these things build relationship. Some of them build income, but all of it comes from the stem of, this is my core business. I do social media posts. I've done 110,000 paid posts. That's my day job. That's my core business. And then all the other things are tacked on under the exact same name too. It's all Elevator, just like you said. There was a lot inside of there. And I'm glad you brought up the word, the syndicate investing, because- I was watching the clip on it. I'm like, that's pretty interesting. Can you break down exactly syndicate investing and I guess angel investing? Because I feel like maybe our audience is familiar with the angel side of it, but you spoke about syndicate. Can you break that down? Yep. So as an angel investor, that's you as an individual. So I've done 43 angel investments on average, 100,000 to 500,000 per check. Most angel investments range from 25,000, which is kind of the average check to 100,000. Even the really, really wealthy guys are doing 25K to 100K. 
And then when they get into it deeper, they'll start to do 250, 500, et cetera, if they're really behind a brand, if they're really behind a business. On the syndicate side, the 846 investors that are there, that's where I'm able to do a Zoom call like this and say, hey, I'm raising money for, let's call it Everbowl, which is an acai bowl chain. I'm raising money for Everbowl. I'm investing 500,000. My friend's investing 100,000. This person's investing 200,000. So collectively, me and four friends, we're putting in a million bucks. We're raising $4 million more. Now, the syndicate members can make a decision. It's completely free, completely optional. If they want to invest, they can say, I'll do 25K, I'll do 50K, I'll do 100K. And they can text or email saying that they're going to invest as a group. Now, those 42 people come in. We've raised the $4 million plus the million dollars that me and my friends are contributing. So now we have $5 million to give to the company, Everbowl in this example. We then give the $5 million to the company. The founders are happy because they're getting one check. All of the people in the syndicate group have to wire to me, the elevator syndicate, and then I wire one check to the company, which is important because the company doesn't have to deal with 47 different people. They just deal with me. They have optional to inter interact with them because they're strategic investors, but they don't have to. So syndication deals are really powerful in that fashion for an entrepreneur because you can collectively raise a bunch of money in smaller 25K, 50K, 100K checks for the company. Now, the syndicate in our, in our situation, there is a 20% carry. So some people take a two and 20, it was like a normal hedge fund where you take 2% of the money raised. So 5 million in that example, normally we take 2%, we don't take that. And then 20%, and I'm not saying you shouldn't in case you do a syndicate, you can and should take the 2%. And then the 20% carry is when that company sells. So let's say we put in 5 million at a 15 million valuation. We own a third of the business in that example. Later, that company that was worth 15 million sells for 60. The syndicate investors get their money back at the 15 million valuation. And then out of the 45 million, we then get 20% of their profits. So we don't get any money from what they put in, but we get 20% above. So let's say you put in 100,000 and you got back 400,000 we would get 20% of the 300,000 profit as a syndicate group. And you guys can replicate this for business. People can do it for real estate as well. It's a different model. Uh, you can't use AngelList. AngelList is what we use. That's the biggest platform in the world. Um, it's very inexpensive to use it if anybody wants to do a syndicate. Uh, but we use AngelList. You cannot do that for real estate, but you can do syndication deals for real estate. It's a really powerful way uh, to raise capital and smaller checks for one big deal. So... You're in a business, you say you put up hundreds of thousands of posts, right? What, okay, this is the million dollar question. What is the secret formula for having post work? Like what works and what yep. does not work? So what's interesting is I've, I've handwritten almost all the captions. Out of the 110,000 posts we've done, almost every caption I've written. Uh, and the basic things are the human eye. The brain, when we're scrolling through social media and we see something that we like, that gets us the serotonin, we see the visual thing, that photo or video, let's say Kylie Jenner is holding up glow water last week, right? Visually, you see her holding up glow water. The caption has to be easily readable. If the caption would have said, I'm Kylie, I love glow water. Thank you and shout out to this photographer, this location, this makeup artist, this hairstylist. The human eye would see too many things and too many tags and we wouldn't think about glow water and we wouldn't click on it because there's too much action happening. If it says, I love Agglo water, now us as consumers and followers know what to do, right? If, I, if they say, she says, I love Fashion Nova or thank you to Fit Tea, et cetera, the human eye knows what to do because there's only three to eight words of what to, to click on. If it starts to be not a sentence, the human eye will skip through it. When you give us too many options, we choose none. And so it's really important when you do shout outs, when you do influencer campaigns, make the caption really easy to read. Ideally, it's like four to 15 words, and it's not, a, it's not like a speech. It's not tagging multiple things. There's no extra hashtags. It's just think about what the human eye can see and think about for yourself when you're scrolling through, what do you want to look at? If you see something with five tags in it, you're not going to click any of them because there's too much noise. So you said how many words at max? You want four to 15. So that way it doesn't go more than three sentences on, on Instagram. For example, you don't want to go more than three sentences because then it becomes under the fold. Under the fold means they have to click it to be able to see the rest of the words. You don't want to be able to have, you don't want them to have to click it. How often are you updating, you know, the changes that are happening on social media, right? So, because that makes sense and sounds like, yeah, we could do that. But then there's the algorithm that catches us and then people don't see what we're posting. How do you combat that? 
So the hard part with the algorithm is it changes every day, not every week, not every month. We just don't notice all the little changes that happen as they're testing and they're testing for different segments, different audiences, different countries, different cities, et cetera. So there's a lot of changes happening. The main thing to keep in mind is if you want people to see your content is keep your photos and videos for the people that are watching, not for yourself. If you make shareable content, people engage with it, whether you show them something interesting, make them laugh, or teach them something. If you do one of those three things, if you teach them something, they will share it. If they share it, Instagram knows, ding, you're doing something good because someone forwarded your, your post. If you if they see that people are liking it, ding, they see that people like it, now they're gonna show it to more people. If you made them laugh and they're tagging their friends, ding, see what, you have to make people want to engage and the way you do it is make the content for the people. That part will never change. The algorithm will always reward engagement on the post. And the way to get engagement is to make it for the people watching, not for yourself. So um, how do you feel about videos? How, how long should a video be? Because now every video is a reel, even if it's four minutes, it's still a reel. Yep. Um, and, and we know that reels perform better than just regular videos. Um, how long should a video be? So for the most part, I don't do any videos on over 59 seconds. We live in a very ADD society and TikTok has made it even faster. You know, Vine first made it really fast at six seconds. Instagram was 15 seconds and then finally became 60 and then they made IGTV. But IGTV is the proof that people are not watching long form content on Instagram because IGTV is not here. So people are not going through that platform to watch long form content. They are there for short form content. Same thing with IG stories. You wanna keep your, your clips under 15 clips because if you have 45 clips, we're going to skip all of them because we're not in that time. We're not there in our mindset. When we're looking at IG stories, we want it to be fast. And so when someone's enjoying Instagram, you want to keep those videos to under a minute for the most part, unless you need a deep dive, unless you need to go down the rabbit hole. On YouTube, it's the opposite. Unless you're doing a YouTube short, you want to make four minute, 12 minute, 20 minute videos because that's where people are going for long form content. YouTube is like TV to people. So they'll watch long form content. But for the most part, just keep in mind, what you would watch. If you're on Instagram, you're on Twitter, you're on Facebook, under 60 seconds is what I do for all my videos because I want it and all my ads. I don't do any ads over 59 seconds, never. It's never happened and never will. You want people to be able to consume that content in a short form in a short form fashion unless you're on YouTube. Mm. So when you you have obviously high profile clients, is there a specific peak time that you you, you ideally that you like to post in? How consistently, how consistently and, and how many times or how often do you suggest people post Yep, on a daily basis? So the main thing to keep in mind is it's kind of like if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around. The main thing to do is post when people are awake. I often see people posting at 3 a.m. and midnight, et cetera. And then they're on the West Coast and now it's you know three hours later on the East Coast. If people are awake, they cannot engage with your content and they are unlikely to see it the next day because if your post doesn't do well, Instagram or the other platforms are not going to show it to them. And so then it's like a double whammy against you. So the main trick is post when people are awake first. Second, when you start to get granular, eight and nine in the morning is always going to be the best because that's when people are first getting up, going to work, first getting to school, or they're at work. And the first thing they do is check their phone. And so the, it, a lot of the things I talk about are just real life common sense. The same way you read a caption, the same way human behavior is. If my eye can't see it or I'm on my way to work, that's the times that I'm looking at content. The next part is at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. is when people are leaving work, leaving school, just getting home. During that time, it can also now breathe. Breathing means the post is getting some engagement and it can breathe because the platform is showing it to more people. And so if you post at 5 to 6 p.m. and people are starting to trickle home, again, one of the first things they do is they open up their phones to look at social media. So eight to nine in the morning when they first get to school or work, 5 to 6 p.m. when they're first leaving, all of my posts for paid posts, I'm requesting an 8 a.m. post or a 9 a.m. post, depending on what city they're in, or a 5 or 6 p.m. post, depending on what city they're in, Monday through Friday. The weekends are much different because there is no driving to work. There is no getting home from school, et cetera. So the weekends are mostly just posting any time between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. It could be 11, 1, 3. There's no formula to the weekends because sometimes there's football games. Sometimes there's award shows. Sometimes there's them going to a picnic. There's things happening on the weekends. So you're going to have a very different ebb and flow when it comes to the weekends. But Monday through Friday, keep in mind, 
8 a.m. to 9 p.m. is ideal, and 5 to 6 p.m. is ideal. Is when you say p.m. are you are you referring to Eastern Standard Time? So or... I'm, I'm referring to PST. I'm referring to the West Coast time. Except if the majority of your followers are in East Coast, then the time is the same for you. If you have a national audience or international audience, then you're going to want to go a bit earlier, keeping in mind the time difference. So, so you look geographically where your followers are and base it off of that. Correct. If I have an East Coast, if I have someone from New York or Miami doing a post, I'm having them post usually at 10, 11 a.m. because that's going to be 8 to 9 a.m. out here on the West Coast. I'm not going to have someone on the West Coast. I won't let them post at 10 p.m. because that's one in the morning. You know, if you're in Atlanta, New York, Miami, it's so late. They're, they're sleeping. So I'm very strict about that. 8 a.m. post, 9 a.m. post, or 5 to 6 p.m. post on the West Coast. Do you feel that um, for entrepreneurs, right? How do you feel about people selling um, from social media pages? Do you think that social media should just be, you know, not really for a hard sell? Or can you sell from a social media page? How do you feel about that? You absolutely positively can sell from a social media page. If you believe in something that it helps people, either make more money, better credit, get a house, lose weight, improve their marriage, better food, et cetera, it is rude of you not to sell it. If you think what you sell helps people, it is rude of you not to sell it. And people pay for what they believe in. So if someone buys something from you and you're selling them something at $100 or you give it to them for free, I promise you without a shadow of a doubt, because I've done this my whole life, if they paid 100 bucks, they will take it way more seriously than if you give it to them for free. And a lot of people are taken back by that because like, oh, if you believe in your product and you're going to help people, just give it away for free. People will do not take action when they get something for free. If you throw an event, I'll give you an example. When I throw elevator nights, which is similar to your guys' business conference, my event's free. I have to have two to three times the amount of people RSVP to show up because of the free ticket. Your guys' event, if they paid 200, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, two grand, whatever, they're going to show up because they paid 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, right? They're always going to show up. For my event that's free, if I don't get a thousand people RSVP, I'm not going to get three to five hundred people to show up because it's a free ticket. They don't mind. Ah, I'll be late. Ah, who cares? It was free. So when I have my mastermind events, my mastermind events, a hundred thousand dollars. Nobody misses it, right? They'll cancel whatever they have to cancel, fly across the country, the planet to be there because they paid a lot of money to be there. If they don't pay anything for it, they're not going to take it as seriously. So do not be scared to sell on social media. However, keep one thing in mind. Do not sell every day. If you're selling every day, people are going to be blocking you. They don't want to watch it. They don't want to, they don't want to feel sold to every single post. And so the idea is give content, make them laugh, make it interesting, teach them something, et cetera. Boom, ask for the sale. Make content, make them laugh, make them interesting, make them part of your life, build some emotional attachment, top of mind awareness. Boom, go for the sale. If you do that, I promise you, your engagement will go through the roof and they'll help you sell. Rather than if you're trying to sell every day, people are going to stop watching. If you don't pay, you're not paying attention. And that's really true a lot of times. And yeah, we, we do a lot of free events as well. So we know the ratio. Sometimes it's even worse than that. Sometimes you have to do like a five to one or four to one ratio, yep. depending on the event, depending on the market, depending on the day. Um, and, you know, it's one of these unfortunate situations but it's a reality and um, you have a free event and you have to get 5,000 people to RSVP <laughs> for 1,000 people to show up. Right. And they, they, they just don't take it serious because you could be in Idaho and just RSVP for right. an event in Miami. And it's like, right. you know, why not? Like, I'll just do it just cause. Yeah, we've, we've seen so it. that's it. I say, I have to say that's important for when you're starting your business, anybody that's listening if you have a free anything, if you're doing giveaways, free events, understand that you have to take that into consideration because you might not take that into consideration. You might just think, okay, I'm looking for a thousand people, a thousand people signed up for this free giveaway, a thousand people signed up for this free event and I'm good. And then you get disappointed with only 300 or 200 people actually show up. So if you're, if you haven't done that before, then that's, that's an important lesson. Yeah that um, we had to learn. We actually. Learned <laughs> yeah, we learned it in real time. Yeah. Yeah. So social media obviously play, plays a major part, but people in, in small businesses, they, they, ha they have social media pages, but they also have landing pages and websites. Can you talk about the importance of, of, of having or give us some tips on having 
a, a landing page or a, a one page website where it's going to get the most effective traction for our business. Yep. So you only have three to seven seconds when people land onto your funnel page or to your landing page for them to make a decision if they're going to stay. And so the very top of your page is the most important part. The very top screen is the most important part to be very visual and have four to nine words that explain what they're looking at. And then they will make a decision if they're going to keep scrolling. There's actual like ways you can see how far they looked, how long they spent time within your website. They can show you, it's called a heat map. They can show you the heat map of where they went, how long they stayed, et cetera. For the most part, all of the decision happens in that very top of it. And in that top page, you should also have your buy now or your RSVP or your email sign up should be in the bottom of that top. If you look visually, let's say on your phone or a laptop, the bottom of that top of the screen, that bottom frame should have your buy now or claim this or sign up or give your email there. The call to action should be there on the top screen because you don't know if they're going to scroll down, but if they see it, they can take an action if they want to. Now, next thing, do not have a website with 19 different pages. I promise you, they're not going down that rabbit hole with you. That's not what they're there for. When you're trying to sell a product, unless you're trying to build some long-term brand, and even then, people do not want to go down 19 different pages. You want to make it as easy as possible, dummy-proof it. So when they get to your page, if you're selling fashion or protein or CBD or real estate or credit, whatever you're doing, top of the page, explain what you're doing. The middle part, they should definitely be able to take an action. You're telling your story. By the time they get to the lower third, like two or three pages down on your one main page, you have to be, they should know, they should be able to explain your business to other people. They should be able to brag about you. Dan, as we can go on day, all day about this, um, but you know that you, uh, you know, we respect your time and we have a couple other people to bring on. But before, before we let you go, wanted to thank you for actually adding your course to the EYL university platform. Yes, yes, so that's, yes. that's part of the remodeling that we're doing. We, we've added, I believe 19 different courses and um, Dan's course is one of the courses that has been added to the platform. So if you're on the EYL university platform, then you have access to the course. So um, we should put some gems in the chat from our earners right now. Yeah. Appreciate, <laughs> appreciate that. Appreciate you. Appreciate that for sure. <laughs> um, thank you. Any, any last words you want to leave the people with? Just, get started. So many people are scared and nervous about getting started. If you just start, make your website, make your social media, get your name, get your bank account, just getting all the things getting set up, you'll feel like a business. And it's kind of like if I throw you in the pool, you start swimming, you're going to feel more, way more comfortable once you start swimming. Appreciate it. Let's Appreciate start. it. Let's start. Dan, uh, it was great connecting with you. I've heard a lot about you. This is the first time I've actually been able to connect. Hopefully we can connect again. Um, thank you for, for coming. And once again, thank you for adding your course to the platform. Really appreciate it. Okay. Happy holidays to you and the family. You got it. Anytime guys. Thank you. All appreciate right. You. Take care. My graduates from my school being Forbes backdrop, backdrop, <laughs> <laughs> a mic drop, backdrop, backdrop. <laughs>